we're going to do a quick review of a refrigeration cycle in both modes because you can't hear it enough. And the more that you understand your refrigeration cycle, the better it's going to help you. And it plays an integral role in understanding how this metering device is working. So first, we're going to start off with just like we did before. We're going to start off with our compressor. It pumps a high pressure, high temperature, superheated vapor, the hot gas line, the discharge line. It runs up to the one pipe by itself. Of the three pipes, the one in the middle is always going to be suction to our optional uh, suction line accumulator and then all the way back to our compressor. That, no matter what mode it's in, is always going to be the same. Low pressure blue, high pressure in red. Now, once we've established that, what mode do we want? Well, let's talk about summertime. In summertime, we're going to send our high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor to our reversing valve. We're going to send that hot gas to the outside. On the outside, we're going to de-superheat. That's sensibly rejecting heat out of the refrigerant. It gets it down to saturation. Then the majority of this condensing coil is going to be changing state from a vapor all the way to a liquid. That's where a massive amount of B2s or heat are rejected. That's the magic of HVAC. All of those B2s in that change of state, even though it's the same temperature through most of this coil. Then at the very, very bottom, we're going to subcool that refrigerant below its saturation temperature. So it's going to be a warm, high temperature, high pressure, subcooled refrigerant and that's going to travel all the way through our liquid line and we're going to get to this point this is our metering device this metering device we're going to bypass it like it's not even there we bypass that metering device we're going to go through our by flow liquid line filter dryer we're going to continue on till we get to our indoor metering device which will be engaged and from there we drop the refrigerant changes from a high pressure liquid to a low pressure saturated mixture we have an immediate pressure drop the flash gas boom instantly 25% of that refrigerant flashes into a vapor cooling the remainder 75% liquid that 75% liquid vapor combination flows through our evaporator coil, boiling from a liquid to vapor. The heat from the air makes the refrigerant boil. The refrigerant boiling absorbs the heat out of the air. So the air is sensibly cooled, and we also have condensation on the coil. So we're also latent cooling the air as well. But the refrigerant changes state from a liquid to a vapor. And then after we boil all that refrigerant from a liquid to vapor, it's still lower than the temperature of the air. So we then superheat that vapor. So it's going to be a low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor. That low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor comes all the way back through our suction gas line that vapor line comes all the way back to our reversing valve makes that quick little loop around through our suction line accumulator to where if there is any liquid it'll drop to the bottom and then we continue on to our compressor and our refrigeration cycle is complete for cooling mode but since it's a heat pump we also want to be able to do heating mode so in the winter time you're going to have a call for heat so you turn the thermostat to heat that de-energizes the solenoid valve for most coils it goes back to its natural mode of heating and then that high temperature high pressure super vapor the hot gas is then directed to the inside remember before this was a vapor it's still going to be a vapor except before is a low temperature low pressure vapor now it's a high temperature high pressure vapor. So this line would be red in this mode. We then go all the way to our condensing coil where we de-superheat, sensible rejection of heat. Then we change state from a vapor all the way back to a liquid. A massive amount of B2s of heat are being rejected into the house. The temperature of the refrigerant is warmer than the temperature of the air. So as that refrigerant changes state, it's giving up heat. But as the air goes across it, it's actually warming the air, putting warm air to the house. After we change all that refrigerant from a vapor all the way down to a liquid, we can then subcool that refrigerant. It's still going to be high temperature, high pressure, but now it's going to be subcooled according to its saturation temperature. That liquid refrigerant is going to come this direction through the liquid line. It's going to bypass this metering device like it's not even there. It's going to go through our by flow filter dryer and it's going to continue on the liquid line until it hits this metering device, which is going to be engaged. From there, we have an immediate pressure drop. It drops immediately from a liquid to a saturated mixture. 25% approximately of that refrigerant flashes, bam, immediately change the state, reducing the 75% liquid that's remaining. So all the temperature and pressure matches the temperature and pressure chart. We call that saturated. That saturated refrigerant is going to go all the way out to the outdoor cool, which is now going to be evaporating. The refrigerant is going to be evaporating, boiling at a lower temperature than the air outside. The air outside, the heat in the air outside is making the refrigerant boil. The refrigerant boiling is absorbing heat from the air outside. So heat leaves 
leaves the air and goes into the refrigerant. The refrigerant boils and changes state from a liquid to a vapor, a massive amount of latent heat. We're absorbing a lot of heat. After we boil all that refrigerant from a liquid to a vapor, it's still lower than the temperature of the air outside. So then we continuously move air over it and we superheat that vapor above its saturation point. So coming out of our coil is a low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor that then goes to our reversing valve. And now this just simply makes this nice little loop right here. And then we continue on low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor all the way back through our accumulator. And for whatever reason, if we weren't able to get all that refrigerant turned into a vapor, this protects that compressor. And then we have only vapor coming back to our compressor. So we're just simply absorbing heat from outside and rejecting heat inside. But what we wanna talk about today is specifically what is happening with the metering devices. Notice I've painted this blue and this red because it's always that same way. But I didn't paint this line. Even though it's always vapor, during heating mode, it's high pressure vapor going that way. In cooling mode, it's low pressure vapor going this way. But either way, it's superheated vapor going back and forth. Now notice this line between the metering devices, I painted it red. At that point, it's always, always, always going to be a liquid, a subcool liquid between those two points. Always, always, always. Now notice that even though we change directions, my liquid is flowing this way in the wintertime and my liquid is flowing this way in the summertime, it's still liquid between these two points. Now here I didn't paint it because in the wintertime, as we're flowing liquid this way, this is where my pressure drop is because my metering device is here. This is going to be low pressure refrigerant. And notice I painted it red all the way up to this point, but after that point, it's going to change. It could be low pressure, it could be high pressure, depending on which way it's flowing. But this line is always going to be liquid refrigerant. Now let's focus on how these metering devices are allowing that bypass and how they're allowing it to be metered.